Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Islam, the way of life, a brand new show by Ikra TV. I'm your host, Abul Hasnat, and I hope you've been enjoying the last few episodes that we've done so far. And we've got another episode in store for you today, inshallah. But as I do with my other episodes, I'll do the same here. Let's start with some Quran recitation. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي جعل في السماء وجعل فيها سراجا وجعل فيها سراجا وقمرا منيرا وهو الذي جعل الليل والنهار خلفة لمن أراد أن لمن أراد أن يذكر أو أراد شكورا وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا سلاما والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله that's a beautiful recitation I have some of my regular guests back with me and as I do every show I'd like them to eat. do salam to you and introduce themselves so I'm going to start on the far side young man if you'd like to do salam say your name and how old you are Assalamu alaikum my name is Omar and I'm nine years old thank you very much welcome back Omar young man in the middle do salam introduce yourself and your age Assalamu alaikum my name is Suleiman and I'm eight Mashallah. And young man of the and welcome back again. Um, do salam, introduce yourself. Assalamu your alaikum, my name is Jessin and I'm 10 years old. Straight in there, didn't let me finish my intro, he's straight in there, well done. It's lovely to have you back and it's lovely to have you back back on the show as well. I hope you enjoyed our last few episodes um, where we are looking at various things. So we want to spend each of our episodes looking at a portion of the life of the Prophet or a description of the characteristics of the Prophet. We want to be looking at we're going to look at some uh, a video of a good deed and we're going to talk about that good deed and we're going to try to talk about some of the props that we have here we might look at some of these books here we might look at some of the games we've got here and some of the things we want to have some what you guys are joining to and as always in all of our episode our email address is across the bottom of the screen if you have anything any comments that you wish to say or anything you'd like to say email us if you want to be a guest on this show please send us an email or tell us and even more importantly we want you to watch these good deed videos that we have if you or your parents have a video that you want to share with us, do you want to send to us and then we can watch and talk about it? Please use this email or a WhatsApp number will be added on there as well. So you can see. So on, on this email address or the WhatsApp address, please send that through. Um, my guests here, Omar, Suleiman and Yasin, I think I'm going to ask them to do a little bit of recitation for me today as well. Before I look at the next part of the Prophet's life, inshallah, which we're looking at, we're continuing to look at the specialities of the Prophet, but we're looking to look today at the description of the Prophet, inshallah. Um, Yasin, um, 
would you be able to recite for us uh, Surah Fatiha? A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillah Rahman Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Rahman Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iya Kana Budwa Iya Kana Sayin Iddin Surat Al Mustaqim Surat Al Ladin Nam Talayim Hail Al Maktub Alayim MashaAllah. And I hope you guys at home, you've also regularly practicing your recitation. Um, oh, Yasin has been telling us we've been practicing very hard, so alhamdulillah. Um, and inshallah, in the other episodes, I want you guys to do some recitation for me as well. And maybe you can come and join us on the show one day as well, and you can do some recitation. Right, let's go straight into the Prophet's life. Now, last time we spoke about the Prophet's names and his specialities. And I mentioned nine names of the Prophet. Can you guys remember the nine names that I said of the Prophet that Allah has given him? Because we said the Sahaba had given him 250 names, but Allah had given him nine. Can you guys remember some of the names? Go on. Ahmed. Ahmed. Nabiyur Rahma. Nabiyur Rahma, very good. What was his main name that everyone missed out? I don't know. Akam. Muhammad. Yeah. So there was other names. Nabiyur Rahma, Nabiyur Tauba, Nabiyur Malahin, Mukaffa, Akib, Ahmed, Muhammad. Um, those are some of the names, but I'm not going to go through them today. It's not what today's episode's about. Please go back and look at our previous episode and go through those nine names and talk about it with your parents. Um, we also spoke about the specialities, some of the specialities the Prophet had. Did we say about he had the biggest ummah? Didn't we? Did we say he had the ru'ub? Can anyone tell me what the ru'ub is? Um, Sulaiman? When he descends to the heavens. Huh? When he descends to the heavens. No. Um, it, 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 a ru'ub is, is something that makes everyone scared of him. Yeah, his enemies. Allah is giving the ru'ub which makes his enemies scared of him. That's right. Um, you said descend to the heavens. That's Isra wal Miraj. Um, he also had the biggest fountain in heaven, um, didn't he? Do you remember what it's called? Or what we called it? It was the Haud, yeah? And we said that we would do it. So we, and, and what was our moral for last time? Yes, Suleiman? To spend more time with the family. That's right. Our moral last time was togetherness, inshallah. So let's go into the specialities of the Prophet today. I'm going to talk about the specialities, the, well, the description of the Prophet Sallallahu today. And I'm, every time I'm going to do a description, I'm going to take a break and ask you guys, do you know anybody that has those descriptions, okay? Um, okay, so the first one's uh, description of the Prophet. Um, we, we know from, a, um, there's a hadith in Tabarani, so I'm going to go straight into this, where um, Ar-Rubaya bint Mu'awif, she told her son, so she is a Sahabiya, and she told her son, she said, if you were to see the Prophet, it is so you have seen the sun rising up. What do you think that means, guys? If you saw the prophet, up? it means he was so beautiful, it was like the sun rising. Yeah? Okay? Now, Qab ibn Malik, he says, whenever the Prophet وسلم, used to, um, was happy, it was like a full moon. Now, let's think about that. Go on, Sulaiman. It's like he shined like the moon, like the moon above. Absolutely, the prophet's smile was like the bright moon amongst the darkest clouds. That's a beautiful description from Qab ibn Malik. Amr ibn al As said was said there was nothing more beloved to Amr ibn al As. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> there was nothing more beloved to Amr ibn al As um, than the face of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and. He, Amr ibn al-As would say, uh, who was a Sahaba, that he never got tired of looking at the face. And he said, but if anyone was to um, ask him to describe the face, he couldn't describe it. He said he could not stop looking at the Prophet. And he would gaze at the Prophet all day, Amr ibn al-As. But he couldn't describe it because that's how beautiful the Prophet was. Um, and he just said he it always made him want to just stare at the Prophet. Okay, Anas ibn Malik was a young Sahaba. And he said that he met the prophet, the prophet when he was only seven years old. Okay, now another dis um, description, we'll carry on the description. So, um, the pro uh, in the Shama'il of At-Tirmidhi, the Prophet was said to be neither very tall 
but not too short. He was not extremely fair, nor was he, um, nor was he very um, tanned or ruddy is the word they use. Okay, so that's a description of the Prophet. He wasn't very tall, wasn't very short, wasn't very dark skinned, neither was he very light skinned. So he was in the middle. Okay. Um, he was said to have not very curly hair, but it wasn't straight either. So he had some curls on them, but it wasn't super curly, and neither was his hair straight. And um, the hadith narrator says that he says, his hands felt like a soft and velvet. Okay. And every time he smelt of musk. What is musk? So no one. Like a perfume. Perfume, very good. So this is a really strong description of the Prophet from the Shema'i al Dimidi. Let's take a break. I'm gonna now the Prophet subhanAllah has got so many lovely descriptions here. Um, I'm gonna ask you, Yasid, who can you think of? And you can just say a family name or maybe someone famous that's not very tall but also not very short. Your cousin, okay. Um, Omar, um, Suleiman, do you know somebody that's not very fair, but also not very dark either? My cousin Uthman. You've got a cousin called Uthman, mashallah. Um, Omar, um, do you know somebody that doesn't have very curly hair, but then doesn't have exactly straight hair either? It's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh -huh. okay, do you have any cousins or relatives? No? You guys at home, try to think of people that you have the, 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 the um, qualities because the Prophet ﷺ had all of them together. Okay? Now, this is one of my favorite descriptions. Listen very closely. So, Al Bara ibn Azib. Al Bara ibn Azib is a Sahaba. He said, okay, the Prophet ﷺ was of medium stature with broad shoulders, his hair was thick. And others said his beard was bushy and he had grown his hair to his earlobes before he, before he would shave them off. Okay. Um, he said that once he saw the Prophet wearing a hullah. A hullah is like a shawl. And he said, and I never saw anything so beautiful. Okay. So let's, let's look at this description. Okay. We're going to look at the hadith from Ali ibn Abi, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Um, the Prophet's cousin. So he says, the Prophet ﷺ did not have a fleshy face, but neither was it a round face. He had a whitish tinge, which is slightly reddish on his skin. Eyes were large with blocked pupils and his lashes were long. His joints were large and his upper back was broad. He didn't have hair all over his body, but had a fine line of hair down the center of his chest. Um, he would walk briskly all the time. It was almost every time he walked, it was like he was walking downhill, even on a normal level road. He was walking fast. And when he turned, he wouldn't just turn his face. If somebody called him, he would turn his whole body to address somebody. Okay. Between his shoulder blades at the back was he had the seal of prophethood, which was a small growth of hair. And whoever <coughs> unexpected saw him and met him for the first time would stand in awe of him. And whoever accompanied him would just end up loving him. It was, any, it was never, one, never anyone before him like that or anyone that came after him like that. So this is such a detailed expression, and, and description, sorry, shall I say, from Ali ibn Abu Talib. Now, some of the things that you guys might at home might understand, you guys might understand, when they said that he was, he was he had a broad stature, stature, um, a stature. So the Prophet ﷺ was very broad. So it looked like he was, he was a very muscular person. Okay. Yet, as we said, he wasn't very tall, wasn't very short, but he looked muscular. Okay. His eyes were big, so he had very big eyes, and his lashes stood out as well. Um, what else? Was he? And anyone that saw him, they would just be in awe. What's in awe? It's just absolute shock of beauty. So that's how beautiful the Prophet ﷺ was. Okay. Um, we got Jabir ibn Samura. He said one day he was um, Jabir ibn Samura was on his way at night, and it was a clear moon that night. And just so happened that Prophet also passed him when it was the clear moon. And the Prophet was wearing his red shawl. 
And Jabir said, I looked at the face of the Prophet and it was more beautiful to me than the full moon. Which is a beautiful, what a beautiful way to describe the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, let's quickly get through all of these descriptions. Abdullah ibn Salam. Abdullah ibn Salam was one of the, um, one of the Sahabas who was in Medina. He said, on the first day of Medina, I went to see the Prophet. The moment I saw him, I could tell that he did not have the face of a liar. So that's another amazing description of someone. That Abdullah ibn Salam said that he looked at the Prophet and said, this person does not have the face of a liar. So th these are such brilliant things. Umar ibn al-Khattab, the great Umar ibn al-Khattab, who you be named after, young man. Umar ibn al-Khattab said, he went to visit the Prophet in Medina and he went to his room. And the Prophet Sallallahu sat up and the marks of the bed sticks were on his back. And the Umar ibn al-Khattab said that he cried at seeing the sights of these marks on the Prophet's back. And he, would, he, would, he was wondering why the Prophet didn't have better. But the Prophet Sallallahu re, re, replied to him and said, We have the Akhirah. Now that's not necessarily a description, but what that's describing is the Prophet's bed. So what we understand is that the Prophet slept on a bed that had sticks across it. it didn't have a mattress like we do. It sticks across it. So when he was sleeping and he woke up, Umar ibn al-Khattab could see the marks on the Prophet Sallallahu back. And he cried saying, Ya Allah, the, Ya Rasulullah, you are sleeping in such hard time. But what, what was beautiful about the Prophet? He replied to him and said, don't worry, we have the Akhirah. Which means that the Prophet saying he's going to have a beautiful time in the life after this life. Okay? Aisha radiallahu anha, the Prophet's um, wife, she said, sometimes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi would not taste meat for six weeks. And Urwa asked Aisha radiallahu anha, oh, um, oh mother of, a, of us believers, how did you live? And, she, and Aisha replied to her, by eating the two dark things. And what are the two dark things? They, is the, they, they called dates a dark thing and they called water a dark thing. Now we don't think about this, but water sometimes is a dark thing because in those days they never had clean water all the time. They never had filtered water or Thames water that's coming like we do or um, a fresh water for that. Water was dark because it would be a bit murky, but they drank from that still. So that Aisha is telling us the diet of the Prophet that he would go six weeks without eating meat and they would survive on dates and water. SubhanAllah. So I'd like to ask, maybe I'll ask you guys at home, have you gone six weeks without eating meat? Omar, have you gone six weeks without eating meat? Yes. Suleiman? No. Yasin, you have? Sometimes. Sometimes. Some people try this vegetarian diet. The Prophet was vegetarian. not on a vegetarian diet. He was forced this way because they couldn't have food. Um, so those are some of the great descriptions. Um, I have so many more here, but we need to look at some good deeds. So the descriptions we will come back to in another episode as we move along more in the life of the Prophet. We're going to see a quick video now. We're going to see a video of a good deed. Again, another one of the good deeds. And thank you to the families that have been sending in these videos. They've been absolutely amazing. So this video I really liked. Let's all of us look. You guys at home, let's watch this video and let's talk about the good deeds after that. Tidy this up. Nah, maybe later. They will. Younger sibling, 
it's always good to tidy it up for them because they don't understand how to tidy these up. So tidying them up is a good deed. Mashallah, what a beautiful video. Did you guys enjoy the video? Yeah. <coughs> Let's talk about this video then. What we saw there was two younger siblings that took all their games out. And messed it all up. They messed it all up, didn't they? And they caused a mess. But what did the older brother do? Tidied it up. Look. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about that. So let's talk about you guys. Let, let, you guys have this discussion as well with your parents at home. Um, have you ever caused a mess at home? Let's be honest. No. No? Suleiman, have you? Yes. Yes, you have. Omar, have you? Um, yes. Yeah. I know I have. I've, I've had board games and I've dropped all the cards on the floor when I was a kid. So we all cause this mess. I think the biggest mess that I've had is that I've got a game called um, Django. Django? Jenga. Jenga. Why am I going to I've got a game called Jenga. Jenga. And it's blocks of wood. And when you pick one up, it's the wrong one. It causes a mess and it falls everywhere. But after the mess, if you, let's look at the bad side of it. If you left the mess and went away, what would happen? Uh, let me ask you, Omar. Um, someone might not see it and trip over. That's true. It could be a safety hazard. You've left the mess and someone that didn't see it might trip over. And do you know what? Nowadays, a lot of people that does happen because unfortunately we get busy with our phones and we're looking at our phones and we're walking. I'm sorry, I'm stabbing my feet as well. But we're walking, we don't see what's on the floor, we slip up, isn't it? Suleiman, so, what's also another problem about leaving a mess? Sometimes. Uh, you leave a mess and sometimes um, your mum and dad sometimes try to pick it up for you every single time and they start and every single time you start getting aching and you get fed up from all of this every single day. Yeah, so and if mum and dad have to go around tidying your mess constantly, why is that a problem, um, Yasin? Because you can just, um, they get stressed a lot. Yeah, and it's true. So maybe us youngsters, oh you guys, I'm not very young anymore, but no. maybe we should try, do you think it's a good idea we should try to tidy our own things? Yes, Would that free help. our parents and stop them getting stressed? Allow them to have more time to do things with us? We can help them. And we can be helpful to them. Now, what is so special about helping parents, not only and in not real life, but in Islam? Go on, Omar. It's a sunnah, and it, it gives you lots of sawab. Do we do? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good deed, isn't it? It's a suab. That's right. Helping your parents out, you get the suab. And the suab gets saved up for your akhirah. So the more you help your parents. Now, did you guys know that this is the beauty of Islam, the way of life? The beauty of Islam is that you get more suab helping your parents than helping other people. You get always suab in helping everybody, but you get extra suab helping your parents. Subhanallah. So in that video, we saw the young man, he knew that if it, his, his, his younger two siblings made a mess, he helped his mum by tidying up, um, tidying up the mess so that his mum won't have to do it. So his mum had more time to prepare the dinner for their table, prepare uh, their bedtime, and maybe get them ready for school, get them ready for fora and stuff, get them ready in time to practice their surahs. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I hope it makes sense for you guys at home. I want to try another one of our little games here. We did do articulate last time. I, will, I want to go back to articulate, but this game I think is quite fun. This is got a really. This is called Five Second Rule. It's quite a fun game. I want you guys to try this because it's a very simple game. It doesn't cause as much of a mess. Here you've got a timer, and it's how long it takes all the marbles to get to the bottom, and it only takes five seconds. But whilst that happens, you have a set of cards. Now we don't want to cause a mess here, so you have a set of cards, and so you have five seconds to say what I'm going to ask you, okay? So sit back and I'm going to try this game. I want you guys to try this game at home, okay? Um, yes, I'm going to try to start with you. You've got five seconds when I turn this, okay? Let's go on this, right? Name three things that make you laugh, go. Uh, Mr. Tumbus and Horrid Henry. Oh, you only said two things, Mr. Tumble and Horrid Henry. Was you able to say three things that make you laugh in, in five seconds? Let's try another one. Suleiman. In five seconds, I want you to name three planets. Chick, uh, what? Three planets. Uh, Earth, Venus, and Mars. 
Shall we give it to him? Did he do it in time? Yeah. Yeah? He I did hope it you guys did it on time as well. Oh, okay. Omar, let's try you out. Lose. This is a really hard one. Have a go at home as well. Okay. In five seconds, I want you to name three things you can do with potatoes. Uh, make chips. Um, make crisps. He helped you. Oh, time's up. You was he able to name, in five seconds, was he able to name three things that we can do with potatoes? He said make chips and he said make crisps. That's good. Okay. Ooh, let's, I make some. I'm, I'm going to give you guys another go. Give your pie. Got another, before we hook up the moral, let's have one more. Let's have one more go. Because it is quite hard, this game. My turn. This is a really hard one, Suleiman. I'm going to give you this one. Uh, what is it? Suleiman, name three things you might find in a playroom. Uh, a slide, a bed, and a castle. <laughs> a castle. <Okay. laughs> a game. What a game. Games? Okay. Yasin, name three Halloween costumes. Oh, um, death and clouds. Three, yes, sir. Ah, oh, death and clowns. He said, death, maybe the Grim Reaper you're talking about. Skeleton. Omar, I keep giving you the hard ones, don't I? <laughs> can I do it? Can you, can you name, go on then, yes, Can you name, after I've said it, turn it over. Can you name three billionaires? Um, Jeff Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Oh, oh. I don't Jeff know. Bezos. I don't, I don't Listen, only... guys. This is a lovely game and I wish we had more time to play this, but listen, we're running out of time. Let's talk about our moral today. So last week our moral was to give us, or last show shall I say. Um, today, I think looking at the video and looking at the uh, specialist, the Prophet Sallallahu I'd like to say today's moral is being helpful. Would you guys agree? Would you guys at home agree? Let's do videos. And that's, that's, that's the important thing and that's what we want to finish off with. Being helpful. Being helpful to your parents. There are so many benefits. The only downfall, if you ever want to look benefit and negative, is that it might make you tired. But that tiredness, Allah rewards you as well. Being helpful helps your parents, helps them, um, helps you to be a good person, helps you to be liked, helps your parents to do more things, more organised, help your parents to be able to do other things for you, helps you to be a good role model to your older siblings, helps you to be a good role model to younger siblings, helps everyone to understand. Being helpful is such an important characteristic of also being a Muslim. A good Muslim is somebody who's extremely helpful. And if you go and look at some of the conversions of so people that from other religions become Muslim, so most people say one of the things they like the most is how helpful Muslims are. Let's continue our lives to be Muslim, um, good, helpful Muslims. And let's do our best to be helpful to our parents because we know that's the most suave we get. Okay? Inshallah. Have you guys had a good um, day today? Alhamdulillah, I hope you guys at home have had a good day. Try to play the five second rule. We'll do it again in another show, um, but we look to see you soon. I'm, I'm, thank you for joining us again. I'm going to end this show uh, today. I'm your host, Abul Hasnat, and I hope you've liked this, and we hope to see you again in our next episode. Until then, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.